All right, ready to roll. Can I change that? What's that? I change that. I'm going to put a lot of thought on it. See something pick up where? So, uh, Coach, can we talk about the trades for yesterday? Had a few moves and so um, forth. Middle of the season, obviously, we uh, made a few moves. And, uh, you know, Terry put out a statement. And, like, some of those are, you know, long term discussions mm -hmm. that get expedited by the trade deadline. And, like, with uh, Dean and Rashad, those happen as people call around. You know, those are more the opportunity right there at the deadline. And, like, any, any trade we make, we understand there's. There's always a human element and what, what is a tough business. And we understand how it affects every party involved. We always try to do the right thing by the team and by, by the players. So that's kind of how it happened. What's your, plan for, what's your, what's your plans for Finn? Excuse me, I'd like to follow up. I'll answer, I promise you. I'm not going yeah. anywhere. So I'll answer the all plans for Finn. We just got to assess when we see him, right? We um, had some depth at corner and a player that we obviously like. Uh, John Hoke has some history with him at uh, South Carolina. And so it's just an opportunity to, to add some depth, and we'll see what it looks like this week and, and go from there. Great. Are you done? All right. Good. Not um, right. Can you explain the why? <laughs> really? Trading really? Really? Which really now versus maybe waiting Look, Terry put a statement, so. Mike, and uh, these discussions have been ongoing for a long time. And everything I told you is I just told d -Lad. Everything we do here, we understand that there's a lot of parties involved in it, and it cause and effect in a tough business. And we always do everything that's in the best interest of the team and, and, and in regards to the players as well. So I guess what I'm getting at, were you, was this something that Jacksonville came to you with, or were you guys actively trying to shop Calvin? Look, Mike, there's NFL, the way it works. There's these discussions are always ongoing. I said it last week when people call, and you get an opportunity like with Dean Marlowe, there's a million different ways he's – Negotiations happen. Um, you know, like a, explaining that wasn't some short term. It happened at the trade deadline, but those were long. Um, it was a long process, and so I can leave it at that. Terry put out a statement, and that's just really what it was. How much of that didn't go back to even before the suspension because there were trade talks back then? I'm going to focus on the present, Mike. They're getting in and all kind of rumors and innuendo, and these are moves as an organization you make on, and like everybody we've ever had come through here that I've been fortunate enough to coach, or whether it was Jerry Glanville or June Jones. Uh, there's a reason we had over 100 alumni back at the game on Sunday. It's about the people here. What it is a tough business, and we care about people. So whether it's Dean Marlowe or any other player, Matt Ryan, that's the way it goes. And every move that's made, made in the benches in the interest of the team, in regards to the players, everything is thought out as well. And that's it is what it is. So. When it comes to Ridley, though, would you – was there any interest in actually, had he been reinstated, bringing him back? Or were you, were Look, you always looking Mike, to make him move on? Decisions are made, and we're on there. It's the way it goes in this business. And you want to make things bigger than they are. You want to deal with rumors in any window. And we'll sit here and we'll continue to play this game. Or we can talk about the Chargers and our current team right now. I'm just curious, when a player does get traded, do you have a chance to talk to them or, or tell them, or is it kind of like once he's traded, he's gone? And you don't Most of the time, we have a chance to talk to them, and we try to always make sure we we talk to everybody. And in certain circumstances, depending on you know league protocols, we'll abide by those. But uh, always, always communicate, and especially because it is a tough business, but it's a people. It affects a lot of people. There's a human element, and we care about all the all our players, regardless of their football status. Well, oh, I, it's just like when somebody asks me a question. My any private conversation I have with players, they stay private. And that's kind of my my thought, and it's been that since I've been here. And the same thing when you about Julio Jones to any any player. Those conversations will always remain private from my end. Arthur, what unique issues Austin Eckler has to table with you guys? Yeah, he's uh, obviously Justin. Trust him. They use him a lot of different ways, whether they get the ball to him on the screens or they, you know, in traditional runs. But he's obviously got a very uh, high comfort level with, with Austin out of the backfield. He's a damn good football player. Uh, you can see some of the similarities. Uh, Joe Lombardi uses him, uh, kind of comparable to how Kamara's using the passing game with New Orleans. And uh, he's a problem. We, we got to be aware of where he's at at all times. 
things on uh, CP. Yeah, CP will be back out there today. We'll see how it goes. And uh, he'll be back out there. AJ won't. Uh, Elijah won't. They'll you know, be dealing something off and on. And we'll see how it goes the rest of the week with AJ and Elijah. But CP will be out there today. And that's the only guy that's on the IR that will be out there. Are any of the other guys close at this point? Or are you, at, or do you feel like I, maybe I some of those guys that's are? That's a very, again, subjective yeah. question. Circling back to Fenton a little bit. How important, A, was John's relationship with him? Because you have an idea of the person you're getting. And B, the, the ta tackling history there. Well, there's a a lot of things that go on into any decision we make as a football staff. Uh, we got a great football staff, pro and college, and so when these opportunities come up and you and you communicate about them, you know, among the personnel and the coaches, you know, you use every um, resource you got. There's, there's a streamlined communication, and we make a decision. We think it's in the best interest. It, it does help when you have some kind of familiarity with them. You go back to the college evals. You go back to the pro e the current pro evals. And then when somebody has a history with them. It helps, you know, when it's, and when you, uh, when you make a deal like that, something that, you know, a player that could provide depth and we'll, we'll see how it goes and see what it looks like to see if he gets active or not. Does that, does that relationship make it maybe easier for him to be available this week, the history they have? Not necessarily, but at least you, you have a history with the player. You know how, how he learns, um, or, you know, his practice habits, that helps. But, uh, you know, different scheme. So we'll just see. And just to clarify, will he be here today in practicing Rashad? Yes, he's here. Okay. In terms of Marlon, when you go back and look at it, was, did you, you feel comfortable enough with the depth, I guess, you have? Yeah, we, right don't, we wouldn't make the trade if we didn't. That one's pretty obvious. We love Dean Marlowe. Um, again, just opportunity, Buffalo. And um, we, if we didn't feel good there, we wouldn't have made the deal. That depth. Is it more some of the cross training stuff that you've done back in preseason that allowed that, or is it what Moff, or maybe what Moff had shown you on practice squad? Both. We get we have guys that we feel uh, in a house um, that have cross trained to your point, and and Javante. Uh, coach, you have any update on Hawkins? Oh, he'll be out there. The only yep, two guys that will okay. we'll be uh, AJ and Elijah. Will he be in the limited portion of protocol? So, hey, so how are you? <laughs> that was almost better than the than the, the little uh, clawing back and forth that you Mike did earlier. But he'll be out there, and we'll we'll see how the week goes, Mike. Um, coach, the pass rush against Herbert and the pass defense. Um, are there some things you all can do to you know uh, you know uh, ramp that up a little bit? Well, you try every week. The, how you affect the quarterback? Different obstacles, uh, different schemes. Justin gets the ball out really fast. He's not taking a lot of sacks. Um, Said a really good football player. They, they lead the league and pass attempts per game. So, uh, you know, it's probably going to be pretty obvious what the game plan is. They're playing to the strengths of their team, right? Herbert, Eckler, uh, the passing game. So, we uh, every week there's a different challenge depending on your plan. Doesn't mean that they have to come out there and throw it 50 times, but understand that that's a strength of them. Obviously, they've got a run game and they've got good players back there as well. But any way we can affect the quarterback, you're always looking for that edge. Mark, as you look at uh, your evaluations, always got quarterbacks that come out. It wasn't very long ago that Herbert came out. You reflect back on some of the things that you were thinking about him as, as you scouted him, and as he, it, it certainly seems like he's lived up to the as his bargain when he started. What are your thoughts on him and where he is now and what you thought of him coming out of college? Well, I mean, he's a really good player coming out of college, and where we were, uh, that was the COVID draft in 20 uh, with Joe and Tua and Justin. So, uh, you know, where we were picking that year, I mean, you look at him, you know, I was coordinator at the time, but it wasn't like we were taking somebody in that range right then. I mean, obviously those guys all all went pretty high. So you, you do look at him, uh, thought it was a good player coming out. Obviously that class has been pretty, pretty special. If you look at those three guys and the success they've had and so sometimes I don't remember there being a ton of hype on Justin. Obviously, people thought highly of him because he went in the top ten. But uh, that's what sometimes you got to understand what's real and what's not. But he's a terrific player. Uh, a lot of courage in the pocket. Changed his arm angle. He's really accurate down the field. Uh, pretty complete quarterback. Uh, 
Interesting matchup, right? I don't know the stat on me. We can look it up on the last time two Oregon quarterbacks were going head to head <laughs> as starters. You, uh, you talked a few weeks ago about what Cordero would do when he comes back. Now that what you've seen from Tyler and from Kayla, maybe on a more consistent basis, how does that help? How to bring CP back? How does that maybe alter some of what you're able we'll to do? We'll find out Sunday. Trying to walk me into some scheme questions, but we'll find out Sunday. <laughs> we'll let Brandon and uh, figure out how we're going to do that. So you're, are you anticipating that the other week goes? How can guys CP help just open up the run game, like having such an experience and things like that? A lot of things. I mean, we just try to play the strengths of our players and we try to find solutions. No matter who's up every week, our job is to find solutions and try to win a football game. However, we can do that. You know, it'd be no different. Uh, you know, whoever's up on game day, and we try to play the strengths of our players. When you see these standing scrums that we see at the end of some runs, how much does that speak to you about your offense's finishing mentality? Well, you know, we got a lot of guys that, that play with a lot of effort. We try to play clean through the whistle, uh, nothing cheap and dirty, but uh, we like to play with effort and finish. And it's as uh, those guys and the mentality they play with as, as an offense. And so, you could feel that certainly as the games go on, and, and we've got some physical runners, uh, whether it's in, in the passing game or, or in traditional runs. Are, are there any specific coaching points in those beyond just push really hard? I mean, do you, are you trying to protect your ball carrier? Because I know at the defense, at uh, that point, it's trying to. Do it. It's kind of like the scheme questions. Um, I'm not going to get into some of our internal coaching discussions, but I, I enjoy uh, watching the way our guys play. Carolina, but do you have anything right on Tennessee, Georgia, this weekend, watching it or anything? No, I'm not going to trap me into that one. We've got players players, and, uh, you know, a lot of people with a lot of interest, right? The, the home school, um, home state school. Um, it'll be a big game. We've got Tennessee connections from CP to, to Max Plank. So a lot of, lot of um, conflict of interest. I get to be a neutral party in it. I've got a niece. She's a sophomore at Georgia. I've got a lot of cousins who went to Tennessee. I'll be like Switzerland on that one. Cheering for a good game. <laughs> I was going back through. Uh, there was, it looked to me in the Carolina game, the explosives that y'all had offensively. Drake London was blocking downfield on pretty much all of them when he wasn't involved in them. But Shows you what kind of teammate he is. When, is that something that you guys saw from him on film when you were looking to draft him? You saw certain characteristics. I mean, it's part of the uh, mindset that I liked about Drake, I, other than the obvious. You know, I always think the easiest part when you're looking at it, we all, all of us in here can look and see if somebody's fast and you know, they can catch it. You know, those are the easy ones. It's the other stuff that the fit, uh, you know, some of it's luck, right? You may really like a player to Arch's point. You may have loved Justin Herbert, but you had no chance in hell to get him or whatever it is. A lot of times it's about fit. A little bit of luck in the draft, and then when somebody like Drake, there's a lot of characteristics that we liked, and the skill set was we thought was unique. Doesn't mean there, was, there wasn't other really good receivers there. It was just a good fit for us, and we we're starting to see that. And he's got a bright future, and he can he can stay on this path, and, um, and we can keep stacking wins, and all that stuff will take care of itself. Arthur, three level player in Derwin James, a guy mm -hmm. can be a problem. What do you do with somebody like that? Yeah, they got him all over the place. Uh, whether he's playing. A deep part of the field, or he'll come down into the box, the line of scrimmage. Very instinctive player. Um, you can feel him on the, on the film. Kind of the heart and soul it feels like of that second, third level of that defense, and uh, terrific player. But he'll be all over the place. You have to account for him. Marcus has talked a, a few times about how when y'all are first together, he played too robotic, and, and he was too worried about being perfect. Is that something that you've seen change with him over the? course of this first half of the season and him playing a bit more freely. Yeah, absolutely. I think his comfort level has shown week to week. Uh, you know, like I said, in camp, you, there's a lot of things you can't simulate that happen in the pocket. You know, the pressure at your feet. I mean, you can come up with a lot of different drills and guys chasing around or seeing Jim, Jim Zorn throw like dodgeball stuff. I've seen people get up brooms and I've seen people, you know, run at them, whatever. It's not the same until it's live and you actually feel that. And I think you know, what you're seeing too, some of the stuff we've been able to expand and, you know, we'll change depending on the week and the game plan, but there's a lot of different ways we've, we've kind of evolved to attack and you can see them getting more comfortable. You can see them getting into progressions 
and even the way he extends plays and the way he, where his eyes go down the field, not just looking down the field to run, but keeping his eyes down the field looking to throw. Um, and we had some big plays that were made because of that, progressing, sliding in the pocket, and then true play extensions like the one he hit to Drake late. Do you get to watch? I know you're game planning and things like that, but yeah, you peek it a little bit, right? Um, whether you're at the hotel, they always got the games on um, in the meal rooms, especially on the road. So you see it, and you see, you know, you hear guys around the meals talking, and you, and you, uh, the games are on late Saturday night. You, you, you may peek them a little bit, uh, but you stay aware. But obviously, I won't really dive into that stuff until after the season. Last year, you guys really struggled at home. This year, you guys have been much better there. Why do you think you guys have been better at home this year? You know, it's just it's always an obstacle, Mike. You're always looking for something. So we're just trying to win games. Uh, certainly, you want to win at home. Uh, you also want to win the road. So it's not by a lack of, hey, we're last year we just wanted to win games on the road, and this year we just want to win at home. That's not how it works. It's just the constant improvement. There's always something to work on. Uh, you want it to be a home field advantage. We've got a great stadium. We've got a great fan base. And you want to give pe people reasons to come to the game. So it certainly helps when you do win at home. It helps to have that home crowd. Um, and you try to use that to an advantage. But there's a lot of, lot of different things, a lot of different obstacles and things that we got to improve. So I don't have some perfect answer for you. I didn't give some great speech or so some uh, inspirational video. And all of a sudden, it, it flipped. There's a lot of work that goes into it every week. Season and even last season, how important that was to try to figure out how to be able to do that. So I was just wondering if there were things that maybe you changed in your preseason approach or something like that that emphasized it more. Again, I'm not going to the specifics of you know what I say behind team meetings in regard to game plans or home or away, weather. Uh, those are obstacles that everybody's got to deal with, and we just try to find solutions. And like I said, we want to win every game, whether it's home or away. But we do appreciate what our fans have done this year. And, and like I said, we we got to give them a reason to want to be there and because you do feel them uh, when you're in big moments, especially in the second half.